There have been UFO sightings dating back to antiquity all over the world. Even if 95% of these are explainable, there are still enough to be considered true UFOs. Today, we will dive into the amazing world of UFOs and find out what really prevents extraterrestrial intelligence from establishing contact with us. I want to thank my subscribers who write comments that help me to make this channel better. Thanks to Wally Mayo's command, this video is here now. Subscribe to the channel and join the community of science and space lovers. Stacked up on popcorn, we begin. The signal is known as BLC-1, which stands for Breakthrough Listen Candidate 1. The signal was detected over 30 hours and originated from Proxima Centauri. The signal was exactly 982.002 MHz. There is no known natural emitter of anything remotely like this narrowband beam. Report goes the signal is technological, but is it? With life itself, it's just as safe to say that it's a pretty high percent that there is at least some form of life around many stars. With intelligent life, though, it's just safe to say just as there were other planets around a very high percent of stars, that intelligent life is a rare find. We'll research further. But how likely it is for us to find intelligent life elsewhere ever? We just got into the realm of reading the universe it's been less than 100 years since we found out there is other galaxies for crying out loud. 100 years is nothing, especially when we are talking about the vastness of space and how long information takes to go to and from. There are certain restrictions on the random origin of life that DNA, its random synthesis imposes, but now we will consider the physical aspect of detecting intelligent life. Our galaxy has a radius of 50,000 light years and the oldest stars are more than 13 billion years old. That is, if once there was intelligent life in our galaxy, then we would have discovered it, since the electromagnetic trace should have reached the Earth long ago. Moreover, if it were a highly developed civilization, then from the place of its existence, even if there is no civilization anymore, a residual electromagnetic background should constantly emanate, since devices with power sources on radioactive elements could remain, which have a long decay period, billions of years. A highly developed civilization must explore space, and therefore it needs compact, long-working energy sources. And there can be nothing more compact and long-lived except for radioactive elements with a long half-life. For example, we already now on Earth use plutonium with a half-life of 25,000 years as a power source for Mars exploration. NASA's Perseverance Mars rover does not have solar panels, but has 4.8 kilograms of plutonium dioxide on board as a source energy that will allow him to work for 14 years. If we are going to explore the far corners of our galaxy, then we will need more long-lived energy sources with half-lives of tens and hundreds of millions of years. And if we someday send probes to other galaxies, then even more long-lived power sources will be needed, that is, radioactive elements with a decay period of billions of years will be used since there are no special options and cannot be. Think about this. Our galaxy has existed for more than 13 billion years, contains 200 to 400 billion stars, there are also billions of planetary systems, but we have not recorded any signs of intelligent life. No residual electromagnetic traces. This means that in the entire history of the existence of our galaxy, intelligent life has never risen. And since our galaxy is not unique, then with a high degree of probability, we can say that a similar situation will be repeated with other galaxies. Our understanding of how life formed on Earth is still extremely limited. We have not been able to replicate the beginnings of life, so we cannot even say how likely it would be that life would form on a planet exactly like Earth, much less other types of planets. People like to quote the Drake equation a lot, but most of the terms in the Drake equation are completely unknown values. Anybody who tells you there are reliable estimates for all of the terms is blowing smoke. 
even assuming there is currently other intelligent life in the galaxy, given the vast stretches of space across the galaxy and how rapidly signals degrade over these distances, it is hard to know if we could ever reliably identify signals from another civilization. If they exist in one of the nearby star systems, perhaps so, but further off in the galaxy it would be much more difficult unless they had an unbelievably powerful transmitter. Science fiction aficionados like to point out the Kardashev scale and the supposition that more developed civilization can supposedly harness the energy of whole stars or even whole galaxies. The Kardashev scale at this point is little more than a fanciful hypothesis. Current scientific theories do not indicate that type 2 or type 3 civilizations are even possible. It is not even clear that type 1 is actually realistic. So to assume that we should expect to find these super advanced civilizations out there is a big leap. We do not know that such things can actually exist. I hope I justified the hope of watching this video from scientific point of view. Now you can put down the popcorn and subscribe to my channel and to the community at the links in the description of this video to keep abreast of events from the world of science and space. Hi everyone!